Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Facebook Live series for One Voice and the Mississippi State Conference of the NAACP. Today, uh, I'll be moderating the conversation. I'm Charles Taylor, along with Catherine Robinson. Uh, Catherine, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Catherine Robinson, and I'm the program manager for One Voice. And like I said, I'm, I'm Charles Taylor. I work as a, a civic engagement consultant for One Voice, and I'm also the political action chair for the NAACP Mississippi State Conference. Today, we're joined by uh, Ms. Robbie Kemp from uh, Entergy, and I'll ask her to introduce herself. Good afternoon. I am, as stated, Robbie Kemp. I serve as the manager of region customer service, overseeing customer service in the Entergy Mississippi Service Territories in Central, West, and South Mississippi. Um, my primary focus is improving customer centricity, customer service uh, for Entergy's overall efforts. And I, along with a team of six customer service managers are responsible for engaging relationships with political and key community constituents, civic and uh, civic organizations and community and local government. We also manage some um, commercial and industrial accounts. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Kemp. And we also have J.R. Robinson, who's with uh, Mississippi Power. And J.R., could you introduce yourself as well? Yeah, thank you, Charles and Catherine, for, for having me on. Um, I'm J.R. Robinson of Mississippi Power Company. Uh, I'm the governmental affairs representative there. Uh, essentially, my role uh, is working across uh, legislative and policy work here uh, in the state, at the Capitol, and also um, our federal policy uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, so I spend quite a bit of time um, focusing and looking um, at policy in that perspective. I uh, also touch uh, a couple of other different parts of uh, the company as well, um, especially in the community development um, piece of it, uh, doing a lot of work with outside organizations such as One Voice and the NAACP um, in, in making sure that those relationships are good, and shoring up our external affairs uh, side of the house. Um, we also uh, have several other things that um, are involved with that. I serve on the board of our community connection um, organization, which is a volunteer organization of employees that made up that we spend uh, time and money to uh, have community projects and assist uh, things that we think would be good and beneficial to our community. Uh, thank you so, so much, JR. Uh, so the conversation that we have in the day is uh, about uh, electric, electric utility companies. Uh, just to kind of give a big, bit of background, there are three types of electricity companies in the state of Mississippi. You have investor-owned companies like Entergy and Mississippi Power, uh, electric cooperatives, which are um, uh, companies where anyone who purchased electricity actually owned the uh, company. And so many of those, uh, many of the electric cooperatives are in, in, in rural, rural areas. Then you also have uh, what we call munis or municipal owned electricity companies. There's about 17 or so throughout the state of Mississippi. Today, this conversation is, is with uh, our two investor owned companies, Mississippi Power and Entergy. And we just wanted to kind of have a conversation about utility companies, the impact that COVID has had on them, and you know what what type of relief uh, ratepayers should be looking for or should have already gotten. And so you know it's a very casual conversation. If you're out there listening to us live, uh, feel free to to uh, ask a question, and we'll try to make sure those questions get answered. You know it's going to be a, a brief conversation about 30, 30 to forty five minutes. And we'll dive right into that. So the first question is, you know, as how has COVID-19 impacted the utility industry in Mississippi? And I'll, I'll yield to either uh, Ms. Kemp or Mr. Robinson. I'll, I'll go ahead with that one, JR. Um, we hear the term uh, a number of times in terms of essential employees. And while we may not wear that title, we realize that we are indeed critical employees and it's critically important that we keep our operations running. So with that being said, we are taking preventive actions to protect our employees as well as uh, the customers that we serve. Those employees that are able to work from home have uh, actually been working from their home offices. Uh, and those who are, are not, we have established safety uh, guidelines that are in place for them uh, as well as their, their health and well-being. 
So we are uh, practicing social distancing for those employees that are uh, still working uh, on site and um, any work that cannot be done that uh, social, distance, social distancing cannot be practiced, we uh, discourage and, and we try to find another way to have that work done. It may actually be postponed, but we are practicing social distancing. With that being said, we also encourage our customers to practice social distancing when it comes to our employees that are in the field. And of course, if there's anything that they feel the need to discuss, we ask that they call us at 1-800-ENTERGY uh, to have those needs met, but that they allow those workers to continue the work as protection to both the employees and our customers. We, we do uh, strongly practice and, and ask that our customers um, recognize the need for social distancing. And, and I will echo those same sentiments. You know, we do a lot of the same things. Uh, I think this is a trying time that we've all had to figure out the best way to continue to do business while keeping the lights on. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's our core function is to keep the lights on. Uh, and so as industry has, you know, we put in preventative measures um, proactively to make sure that we're not only are we protect, protecting ourselves, but we're also protecting our customers. Um, and doing things, you know, such as telecommuting, canceling a lot of our external meetings that we had set up, you know, canceling tours of our facilities um, and just making sure that those that are at the facilities are constantly being monitored, they're getting the temperature checked, they're doing all the right things and right steps to make sure that they're keeping themselves safe as we continue to go about our business every day. Okay, and thank you for those questions, uh, Mr. Robinson and Mrs. Kent. Now, the next question is, due to the COVID-19, the unemployment rate has seen a significant increase. What can ratepayers do if they are unable to pay their utility bill or are in need of assistance? You know, great question. Um, and we always wanna make sure that we're trying to help our customers in every way that we can. Uh, back in March when the pandemic first hit and we had the shelter in place order issued by the governor, uh, the Public Service Commission, uh, who regulates uh, all publicly owned investor owned utilities in the state, us and Entergy included, um, issued a temporary suspension uh, on debt collection uh, and cutoffs, essentially, which meant for the time during that process that uh, we would not cut off anyone's power um, or we wouldn't cut them off for debt, uh, lack of payment as well during that time frame. Uh, and so, what we've encouraged people to do, if you can still pay, please try and do such. But if not, we do uh, encourage all of our customers that are having a difficult time, uh, especially as it's related to the pandemic, uh, to call us. Let's make an arrangement. Uh, our CSR stand ready and willing to discuss options uh, to be able to help uh, provide through this time. Uh, we at Mississippi Power, we uh, decided on the onset of this to donate $350,000 uh, toward pandemic calls, uh, one of which was uh, money towards our project share program, which is uh, administered by Catholic Charities uh, down on the coast. And so essentially, if you're a customer that are having uh, problems paying, uh, you can call Catholic Charities uh, and say, hey, here's my issue, I'm, I'm having a difficult time, and they may be able to help you with some financial assistance to be able to get through uh, this hardship that you're going through. But Again, I go back to the, the point I first made, please call us uh, so that we can potentially make some type of arrangement with you. It's not uh, our practice that, you know, just because tomorrow you missed it, that we cut you off immediately. Uh, it goes through several iterations before we get to that point. Uh, but the more that we communicate back and forth and have that opportunity to know what's going on and learn what's going on and make some type of arrangement, it makes it a lot easier for us in the process. I will also... I will also just kind of piggyback on JR because he stated some of the things that we also have in place. Um, we have, as a result of this, as we have heard so many times, unprecedented times, we have enhanced our customer assistance plan to the extent that we also encourage our customers to call in to discuss flexible options, which include extending time um, to pay their bills, waiving late fees, and also crediting or reimbursing credit and debit card fees that they may be charged while they are paying their bills. Um, you, we realize also that there are, there are funds that have been made available from the federal government under the CARES Act um, that has 
added additional funding to the, the money that's available for low income as well as recently unemployed uh, individuals in assistance with their bills. This is both residential uh, for our residential customers. And some of the programs that we have include uh, extending the current or past due bills up to six months. And we also have a program that uh, we've had for years, the level billing program. But the enhancement that we've made with this program is that any past due balance can also be included in that level pay uh, level billing program, which allows the, the uh, total amount to be averaged over a, a rolling 12 month period. Um, it, you can contact us again at 1-800-ENTERGY. You can visit our website, uh, www.entergy.com and look under residential customers, look under commercial customers, look under COVID relief. There are different uh, links that you can access there that will direct you to information regarding these payments and, um, and these programs. Entergy as well has um, set up an additional funding source in the terms uh, in the amount of $385,000 that has been directed to support uh, nonprofits that are uh, trying to provide benefits to our uh, employees as well. One of the things we want to emphasize at this time uh, is please be aware of scammers. Entergy will not call you to request a payment over the phone. While you can make payments, that's a, that's a call that is initiated by the customer, but Entergy will never call you and ask you to make a payment over the phone. So if you were to receive any type call like that, contact Entergy before you make any step to make any type of payment because the scammers are active. Well, thank you so much for that. And we really appreciate that information, especially in such a vulnerable time. Uh, you know, one question we want to uh, ask, uh, kind of as a follow-up to that, is that, you know, as we know, COVID-19 is something that is, um, you know, it's ongoing, uh, it is rapidly changing, uh, unemployed, like you said, like you said, folks have been unemployed for some, some as, as, as much as four, four months, and it may even be further. So, you know, like with some of your programs extending out six months, have there been talks to maybe extend it out even further if that's necessary? I think it's fair for us to say that, you know, a lot of that's fluid right now. Um, you know, conversations are always going to continue to be ongoing um, when it comes to it. Um, and, and as we kind of maneuver through uh, and, and kind of determine where we are, where our customer base is, I think we'll be able to adjust and make some decisions um, along the way. I mean, I think it was, very good that we were able to react the way that we were. Um, it's, you know, this is the first time I think that in any of our company's history that something like this has happened, um, the way it's happened uh, and, and so quickly. Um, and so uh, those conversations are continuing to be ongoing, um, especially when it comes to our customers. Again, they're very important to us. And so we want to make sure that um, we are serving them properly uh, in, in, in doing so. So, yeah, they're ongoing. Um, We'll continue to monitor the situation, uh, and I think management uh, will take a lot of those steps in you know consideration, especially with you know the talk of a second wave potentially coming um, and other things that maybe uh, with that we just want to make sure that we are at least keeping the conversations ongoing. And I I will also echo Jr. with that. We will continue also to monitor the uh, impact of the pandemic and, and update our programs and, and plans uh, accordingly. Just as I, I, I described our enhanced customer assistance plan, that is something that was enhanced as a result of the need. So yes, definitely we will continue to, to monitor. Thank you. And just to piggyback off those conversations, you know, COVID has basically stopped the world, especially right now in Mississippi, we're just going back into legislation so to build back up those conversations, are there any pro new proposed legislations or any new legislations that ratepayers should have on their radar? You know, for, for our sector, uh, it's interesting, uh, you know, because we are again regulated by the Public Service Commission. Um, but, but something I think that is important to note, uh, especially in a time like this, when we're all sheltering in place and practicing social distancing, that uh, telecommuting has become a major part of our everyday lives. Um, and working from home, using computers, using the internet uh, and technology. Um, as some folks may know, last year, uh, the legislature 
uh, decided to allow the cooperatives uh, to get into the broadband business. Uh, and, and several of the cooperatives um, have decided to take that mantle and go up. And I think that's a huge, huge thing um, when we realize uh, here in Mississippi that there are still folks that are uh, unserved and underserved uh, when it comes to broadband. And I think now with the way that everything has transpired, that that's become probably a hot button issue uh, where it wasn't as much before. Um, and so, you know, on a federal level, uh, there, there are talks of, of COVID and CARES Act dollars to be allocated towards rural broadband. Um, to be able to provide it to customers that are un and underserved. Uh, and so I think our legislature uh, will still have uh, the ability to look at uh, certain things like that um, as it's going. Uh, this year was a very interesting year uh, for our legislature. As most of you know, the year after a governor's election, uh, it's a 125 day session. Well, uh, that was scheduled to end in May. And of course we were hit with a shelter in place in March. Uh, and so uh, we took uh, time off uh, and, and every now and again, they would come in to, to handle some business. And now we're back uh, full time going for the last two weeks. Uh, and so uh, it'll be extended out a little longer. So I think there's still time to see um, some some things that potentially could come up. Um, I think they're looking at everything right now. Um, they want to try to cover and be as broad reaching as they possibly can be uh, to cover as much as they can and help. Um, everybody that they possibly can. And so uh, I, I think you'll see some things that are, that are continuing to come out uh, by legislature uh, surrounding COVID-19 and even that could have potential effects on our industry as well. Great. Well, well thank you so much for that, Jay. And we appreciate everything you do at the Capitol. Uh, you know, the next question, and, and Ms. Kemp, you had uh, hit on this already, was really about the community partners. So, you know, are you, are, 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 uh, Intergy and Mississippi Power are going to continue to work with your community partners uh, throughout the rest of the year. And also, you know, what does that look like? How, uh, well, how much funds are allocated? And, um, you know, what are you hoping that your community partners can uh, help, help you with? Well, I guess my initial answer is absolutely. We will continue to uh, engage in, in uh, our relationships with those community partners. Um, as we continue to monitor the impact of, of COVID-19 uh, in Mississippi, that will definitely be a part of our conversation. When we start talking about funding levels, um, approximately $9.2 million was allocated uh, under the CARES Act and LIHEAP funds uh, in Mississippi. And while LIHEAP is primarily thought of for low income customers, we realized that the recently unemployed uh, now who may have thought they had not qualified in the past may now be eligible for those funds. So we are communicating with our customers. We are sending, um, uh, we're using the bot uh, system to uh, send messages to our customers. We are sending emails. We are sending, of course, the bills still uh, are coming and they have the payment uh, balances and, and on, that, on their bills, but we are sending uh, proactive letters to customers uh, to make them aware that we are available and are encouraging them to call in to discuss possible payment arrangements with them. We are also preparing to provide letters to our low income customers that also include the uh, financial assistance agencies, uh, low, the LIHEAP agencies in their particular areas, in their counties that are available to assist them in uh, taking their application to see about qualifying for uh, LIHEAP funding. And again, to the recently unemployed who may not have been in that category before, they may now be eligible. So we have that information on our website. We're sending letters to that effect and uh, we're sending email messages also. So as, as JR has stated, uh, and I, I, I state again, we just ask our customers to contact us, reach out to us. Thank you so much. You know, and I'll echo that. I mean, especially with the LIHEAP funding, you know, there's a big push right now federally to increase that LIHEAP funding for all 50 states uh, and us included. You know, I think it'd be very beneficial, uh, especially for a state like Mississippi, to be able to take advantage uh, of more funding um, that could be free falling. Uh, I know there, there are different proposals being floated around right now uh, in Congress, uh, and several of them um, are starting to gain some traction. Uh, and so I think as we see 
more uh, COVID related um, legislation come out that some of that will be included in there. Um, and we're talking about our community partners. You know, we consider ourselves to be great corporate citizens. You know, our mission statement is that we provide world-class value to our customers and communities every day. Uh, and so we wanna make sure that we continue to do that through times such as this. Um, there are a couple of things I just wanna highlight real quick um, uh, that Mississippi Power has done and is continuing to do. Um, I mentioned Project Share earlier that um, there were, we put money towards helping uh, customers um, uh, with their bills. We've also done the same thing for small businesses. Uh, we put up $200,000 to uh, Project Share uh, Catholic Charities will administer the funds for us. Uh, for companies in our service territory, if you're served by Mississippi Power, you have an opportunity to be able to access some of this money to help as well. Uh, and it's for small businesses with 50 or less employees. Um, and again, it's, it's just one of the other ways that we feel like we can continue to help um, our communities. Uh, something else that we've done, we, on the own side of this as well, we did 50,000 to uh, local food banks. Uh, we knew that the food banks were going to be hit pretty hard with unemployment and some of the lower income communities. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to help provide some relief uh, in that effort uh, to be able to do that. And like Ms. Kim said, the, the short of it is yes, we're still going to be fully engaged uh, with our community partners. Um, it's going to look a little different, of course, just because of social distancing and how we go about it. But we have no plans to abandon any partner that we've worked with in the past. And we'll continue uh, to strengthen those relationships um, moving forward. You know, I think now more than ever is an opportunity for us to not only just stay involved, but to increase our involvement. Um, as we move on. Uh, I think we're learning a lot more about our communities and needs and assessing those needs and how we can even be more beneficial than we currently are. And I think that's a, a vitally important to us being a corporate citizen and being in those communities. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, JR. <clears throat> and um, JR and Ms. Robbie. So like just a piggyback, like you said, JR, you wanted you guys wanted to keep in with your community partners. So Independent of the COVID-19, what future programs have your company began to develop to alleviate energy for ratepayers, such as energy efficiency or renewables, to alleviate their burdens? Hey, you know, energy efficiency is kind of a big thing uh, for us. Uh, you know, we do a lot surrounding that. Uh, the Public Service Commission uh, recently just approved a new rate structure uh, for Mississippi Power, and part of that agreement um, that we have is energy efficiency programs. Um, this year is kind of going to be a transition year uh, as we review our programs, and there's going to be a special focus um, to low-income customers and how we can better assist them. Um, the new programs are, are under review. Uh, as soon as they're finalized, we'll start rolling them out. But in the meantime, um, you can go to our website, mississippipower.com slash ways to save. That's mississippipower.com slash ways to save and get tips on energy efficiency and other things. And one of the other unique things that we do offer are energy audits, where someone from our group or a trained professional can walk through and help you with ways to save uh, in your house, your business, uh, et cetera, whatever else uh, that you may want them to uh, assess for you. Uh, and with that, you can get some recommendations on maybe uh, you should probably switch to an electric water heater as opposed to gas. Don't tell our gas friends that. But uh, different things like insulation and, and, and how to better insulate your house, roofing. And there's so many things that you can do and small things that you can do that are available out there for tips that would, uh, would help with some of those things. And so, uh, again, you can call us and we'd be glad to set up uh, an energy audit for you to, to, to come to your house and, or your business and, and help you with um, ways to save. And so I think as those programs start to come, you'll see that they're very um, forthcoming and forward because we want to be able to try to assist a lot of those folks as best we can. And, and Jay, I had a question really quick about government affairs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, can you talk a little bit about the small business programs with uh, MDA? Absolutely. Uh, and so, as you know, with some of the CARES Act money that's flowed down, uh, Mississippi received uh, about $1.25 billion. Uh, and in that, the, the state legislature has allocated uh, a lot of the money for businesses in Mississippi. Uh, and even within the money that they've allocated, excuse me, there's been a set aside for minority businesses. Uh, and so uh, MDA will be the administrator of those funds. And I think they just got the website up and running uh, yesterday afternoon. It was announced. Uh, and so businesses can go and apply for uh, those funds to be able to uh, help uh, uh, 
with whatever it is they may need. And then also, you know, a lot of people uh, talked about the PPP loans as well and some of the other things that were out there. Um, and those are great avenues and tools and resources uh, to be able to use. And, you know, they went towards paying employees if you wanted to keep your employees on, uh, paying your mortgage, paying your utility bills, uh, which we appreciate, uh, and, and, and several other things as well. Uh, but for those that are interested uh, in, in learning more about the funds, uh, MDA is the administrator of those funds. And I would encourage them to go to their website, um, learn more about it, see how you can apply and, and, and take advantage of, of the funds that are out there and made available, especially to set aside there for minorities uh, as well. We really appreciate that, JR. Um, we have some questions uh, coming uh, from the Facebook uh, thank Live. Thank you so much. Uh, um, so some of the questions, um, Illinois, this is from Liz Beasley. Illinois just passed a model program, including ending utility shutoffs and late fees through September 1st. 2020, among other efforts aimed at addressing our current crisis and increasing utility affordability, excuse me, do you believe that Mississippi might create a model? You know, here's what I'll say, you know, again, we're, we are regulated by the Public Service Commission. Uh, and so uh, they have the authority to, to, to dictate how some of that works. Um, I think they're again having those conversations to try to understand and see what would be helpful and most beneficial uh, to us here. Um, I can't speak and say right now today that that's that's going to happen or there's even um, those those types of proposals out there. Um, but what I will say is that I know we work closely to to with our commission to just to try to understand uh, what is what it is they desire. I mean, there are three elected officials in the state, uh, and so. Uh, they represent the people. Uh, so we, we are definitely trying to uh, work with them just to understand what it is and what their desire is moving forward. Again, they did the temporary cutoffs and uh, debt collection uh, for a couple of months here. Uh, and, you know, if it be their wisdom that they so choose, they could extend that uh, for, for a period that's even longer. Um, and so it's, it's essentially up to that body uh, to, to make that decision. And um, also to go along with that, at Entergy, we are monitoring, as we stated, uh, the impact of, of COVID and we are strongly encouraging, we're reaching out to our customers to contact us. So we are, are we're trying to meet the needs of the customers, to hear the needs of the customers so that we can further develop our plans and our programs and, and what is essential to, um, to maintaining their, their health, their safety um, as we, as we endure these uh, unprecedented times. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Kent. And at this time, um, we're just trying to see if there's some more questions coming in. Um, if, if I can say something, I think we had spoken earlier um, when we were talking about arrangements uh, for bill payment, we yes, don't want to just stress that that is just to the residential commercial, residential customers. Uh, the payment arrangements, we, we are also asking our commercial customers, as, as JR has spoken, they were also impacted as businesses were closed. So, you know, utility bills continue to, to mount there as they maintain their service. So we also encourage our commercial uh, customers to contact us because we we too we do have payment arrangements that we have available for them as well. So I do want to make sure that that is known for individuals that may be um, watching us today who own a business. So Absolutely. as the, as they're seeking those additional funds, please reach out to us as well to assist with uh, the payment arrangements for your bills. Okay, hey Miss Kemp, I know early. You spoke, um, you, went in, you went into a little into the conversation about be aware for scammers. So that's to piggyback. If you have a customer that has already been scammed, been scammed, what are some of the techniques that you guys are using to help address that issue? Well, really, we're, we're communicating with customers. When, when we receive notification uh, from customers, that they have received scam calls, most of our customers contact us and notify us of that. They take the time and um, call to check on the status of their bill because they think, well, I know I've paid my bill or I'm not 
received any type of notice of anything. So they will call us. And when we see that information, we, we promote on social media. We promote in, in, in newspapers the, to not fall under the scams. We always encourage our customers to call us. And if by chance someone has been scammed, we also encourage them to call the attorney general's office and the police to report that. Yeah, and, and the same here, you know, it, 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 it's important for us to make sure that we let the, our customers know that, hey, if that does happen, it's okay to hang up and say, well, let me call you back and call uh, our uh, number and, and see, is that really what it is? Uh, and then that's perfectly fine. Because um, again, we won't ask for, we won't initiate a call that will ask for credit card information or billing information over the phone. Um, and so that's important for the customers to know as well uh, as we're going through. But the scamming, uh, there has been reports of it. Uh, I know as, as the onset of it is, you know, people want to take advantage of it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're trying to do uh, different things to to, uh, to 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 combat that. So so one question we had from Facebook Live was something I think we y'all already touched on. But uh, for those who may have joined us late, can you talk about it a little more? And this was basically, you know, are you looking at this strategy long term? Uh, you know, beyond the, the, the temporary relief programs that are, are here right now. For instance, with uh, future rate cases, increases, et cetera. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's all on the table uh, at this point. Again, uh, you know, we said several times on this call, we're in unprecedented time. And I think uh, that we all have to have a lot of these things top of mind moving forward uh, because you never know. Uh, what will happen in the future. And again, when you're talking about a second wave of this pandemic that could potentially uh, hit, you know, we have to be very careful and make sure that we are staying abreast of everything that's going on and adjusting our strategies uh, to be able to accommodate and deal with what the future may hold. Uh, we'd love to say, we, you know, we can predict what's going to happen, you know, next month or two months. And, you know, for, for us and companies, you know, we, we typically and generally can tell, you know, what our, you know, usage is in the summertime and the wintertime. We know when the the highest usages in certain months and that kind of thing. But with the way this works, you know, in, in sheltering in place, businesses being shut down, uh, more people at home, you know, you just never know. And so we're keenly aware of that uh, and, and keeping these conversations ongoing about what tomorrow looks like, what next month mm -hmm. looks like, what next year looks like, what five years looks like uh, from here on out. And, and to go along with that, this coming Monday, three days from now, we will be three months in <laughs> with uh, telecommuting. When, when, when we really began the shelter in place, we will be three months in, in uh, on Monday. So where we are today, we are consistently um, reevaluating. We're looking at what the need is in order to, um, to, to adjust to our customers. And so we can't we can't just create the plan, but we are we are constantly um, reviewing and assessing and just again proactively reaching out to our customers and asking them to do the same. You know, uh, you know, some can argue a pandemic like this hadn't happened in let's say the last hundred years or so, and the impact of it is gonna you know be with us for maybe a decade if not more, you know, with that being said, uh, and, and some of the work that, you know, Mr. Power and Energy has already been thinking about around renewables and um, energy efficiency. Can you talk about the programs that you had existing uh, throughout COVID, I mean, prior to COVID and what those co programs may look like after, specifically as it relates to renewable energy sources, the move to renewables, and also to help the ratepayers be more energy efficient to lower the energy burden. Well, as, as JR had mentioned earlier, Entergy also has the energy efficiency program. And as I just stated uh, three months ago, when we, we began our sheltering in place, we suspended that program because it did involve going into um, homes. But we have recently uh, reopened that program and we are taking, you know, allowing customers to contact us to make appointments where we're still practicing social distancing. But we uh, offer the, the uh, audits that can take place in homes. 
We also have programs that are available for our commercial, our, our businesses, which may include uh, lighting and, and, and retrofit lighting. So we are continuing with those programs. We had begun the uh, meter upgrade uh, to the automated meters. So that is something that we're still continuing. Through those automated meters, we also have a program, um, a portal, customer engagement portal that will allow customers once they have the um, we short uh, the short name for it is AMI. Once they have those AMI meters in, they're able to to look at their usage in 15 minute increments. So that's a way that they can manage and you know kind of see when the air conditioner is on, how many kilowatt hours am I using? So those are those are some of the tools that we have in place to allow customers to manage. Um, their their uh, utility bills, and there may be also additional things such as thermostats that they can purchase. And there are rebate programs that we have available for purchasing energy efficient appliances. So, so some of those things were in place and they remain in place for us to use uh, to, to, to support and uh, provide energy efficiency options for our customers. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And we have some more questions coming. Um, how much did your utilities accumulate in unpaid bills during the shutdown? Will your utilities be willing to observe, absorb some of the costs? So again, that during, during the pandemic and the shutdown, there was a temporary uh, suspension on debt collection and, uh, and cutoffs. Uh, so I'm not sure what the number would be, but again, we, we didn't uh, cut anyone off for unpaid bills or, or bills that had been in the rears uh, and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, what an exact dollar amount is, I, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but what I can say is, uh, again, we've been working with our customers extensively to try to continue to not only help them, but keep the lights on for them uh, during this time. Uh, again, it's a trying time. We don't want to just go out and cut off. And again, it's not our practice to just cut off the mm -hmm. next day. Uh, again, we try to make uh, extend it out as long as we possibly can before it gets to that point. Uh, and so uh, we're doing that. And as, as Ms. Kemp and I have both said several, several times on this, uh, if you do find yourself in that situation, please, please give us a call so we can try to come up with some type of flexible arrangement um, to, to, to assist and help with that. Um, and the thing that I would like to add to this, and I know JR has mentioned, um, different funding that they have with um, Mississippi Power Company. As, as I mentioned earlier, there, there is the LAHEAP funding. $9.2 million was made available. And this is additional funding. LAHEAP typically has programs where they have what they call, where they, what they call winter funds and summer funds. So this $9.2 million was additional funding as a result of COVID that has been made available. Uh, Entergy has a $385,000 Mississippi relief fund that is available, that has been made available to nonprofits to assist customers um, and, and different agencies uh, with bill payment relief. We also have the power to care where our shareholders have doubled their match up to a million dollars for funds to assist uh, elderly uh, customers. So. As, as the funding is here, and as we, as we talk about if additional funding will be made available, the need is here, the funds are here, and we are encouraging our customers to reach out to us by phone, by using their app, by going online to the website to identify these agencies that are available to assist in paying these bills. We understand the financial impact that uh, unemployment uh, places on our, on our customers, but the funding sources that are available, we're trying to uh, communicate that information and make sure that our customers are reaching out to those agencies to, to, to gain support and, and making payments towards their bills. Uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate the conversation. Uh, you know, uh, we don't want to keep people long and it's uh, going to be a 45 minute conversation. We have about three minutes left. Uh, with that, we wanted to ask if uh, uh, JR or Ms. Kemp, you would like to have any closing remarks. And then after that, uh, you know, uh, Catherine, I'll have closing remarks. 
Ms. Kim. Okay, thank you, JR. Um, I, I would like to say I thank you for the opportunity to come and, and, and share this information because again, we, we are trying to reach out to our customers and, um, and, and provide assistance in, in uh, these unprecedented times with these bills, with the, with the, um, the past due balances that have accumulated. We've um, created the enhanced payment assistance plans where we have adjusted uh, our programs to be more flexible, to allow customers to address the past due balances in ways they've not been able to do before. As I stated earlier, payment extensions can be made up to six months. We have the level billing program that will allow past due balances to be uh, totaled and, and paid over a 12 month, uh, over with a 12 month average. So you're paying an average bill um, over that time period. We have arrangements that are being made to residential and commercial customers. Um, one thing that I, I didn't mention earlier during the summer months where we know we see uh, some of our peak bills, Entergy will actually have a rate decrease. Um, our, our costs are driven often by fuel costs. And as a result of lower fuel costs, we're able to pass that along to our rate payers with a rate decrease over the, over the summer months. So these are all things that are, are somewhat falling in line, but Entergy is there. Um, our website, download the app, just contact us. Um, we're here to, to, to serve and we're here to keep the lights on. We're trying to do that, maintaining that social distancing. We, we do that as employees uh, for the benefit of one another. We ask that our customers do that when you see us in the field. And the one thing I did want to state that we didn't really um, go to was during the storms. And we know we've had some, some storms here recently. And, and unfortunately, that may, due to COVID, it may delay our response time. Because again, we have to do things practicing that social distancing. And, and recognizing that lights being out are impactful additionally to our customers, but the health and, and well being of our employees and our customers as, as well um, may remain in place. So uh, I just want to, to close with that. And again, thank you for the opportunity to come before you and uh, contact us at 1 800 Entergy. That's 1 800 368 3749 or www.entergy.com. Thank you again. Uh, thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. and, and, and to echo a lot of the same sentiments uh, uh, as, as the two investor-owned uh, utilities in the state, uh, a lot of the same things are happening. Uh, and so we do uh, do a lot of the same uh, programming and, and, and things of that nature. Um, we just want to remind everybody that, hey, look, our central core function is to keep the lights on. Uh, and that's what we're going to continue to try to do uh, in various ways to, to try to help and assist and alleviate as much relief uh, and provide that to our customers as we possibly can uh, moving forward. Uh, that's our plan. Our plan is not to just, uh, you know, get back to, you know, business as usual because business will not go back to, to normal and to usual. Uh, and so we understand that and, and we understand that there is a need for us uh, to, to continue to be good corporate citizens as well. And so we'll continue to do that. A lot of things Ms. Kent mentioned uh, that we're doing as well, uh, you know, call us with commercial, residential, whatever it is that you may be, just call and have a conversation with us. Again, our CSRs stand ready to assist you in any way possible to help alleviate uh, anything that you may need. Uh, and so we just need to communicate and continue to communicate uh, with us and our customers uh, to make sure that, you know, none of that gets lost in translation along the way. Um, we want to continue to do that. And again, uh, for tips to save, ways to save, mississippipower.com slash ways to save, just to, to get some tips uh, right now out there. I know it's getting hot again. Uh, and so we definitely want to make sure that, you know, folks have some ways to, to, to help uh, alleviate a lot of that. And again, if you're served uh, in Mississippi, by Mississippi Power, I, I know Ms. Kent mentioned uh, what they've done. Mississippi Power has also donated money through our Project Share program. Uh, the number to Catholic Charities uh, to be able to, to find out and apply for that is 1-855-847-055. And that's the number to Catholic Charities uh, to access uh, the money uh, for uh, uh, Mississippi Power that we've donated. And again, it was $100,000 for uh, residential and then $200,000 for small businesses uh, with 50 or less. Uh, and so we hope that uh, those out there in the community would be able to take advantage of that uh, 
have some additional relief. Uh, Charles and Catherine, I want to thank y'all for uh, allowing us to be on and uh, giving us this platform uh, to discuss this uh, and disseminate this information. Y'all are doing omens work right now uh, in the time of this pandemic. So I just want to let you know, we definitely appreciate y'all. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, you know, we really appreciate you, Ms. Kemp and, and JR. Uh, the, this conversation has been uh, wonderful. And there were several questions on Facebook Live that we weren't able to get to. And we, we do apologize for that. We try to keep the format under 45 minutes. Uh, I can't thank y'all enough for, for joining us with this conversation because this is extremely important. Because one thing that has to happen, especially during a pandemic, is for the folks to have the ability to keep the lights on. The last thing I'll say is I would be uh, tremendously remiss if I did not thank and also acknowledge uh, Nishombi Lambright Haynes, who is the executive director of One Voice and all the work that she does and, and leads at One Voice, as well as uh, Reverend Robert James, with the, who is the president of the Mississippi State Conference NAACP, who's been a leading voice uh, in this work in Mississippi. And we wanna thank both of them for uh, you know have, giving us this platform to have this conversation, have this series where we're talking about critical issues during COVID-19, especially as it relates to Mississippians. So thank you again. And Catherine has the final word. And again, we'd like to thank you guys for joining us tonight. As you know, One Voice, we encourage and educate the community on having a voice. And one of the biggest segments that is missing from our piece tonight is that we work with elected cooperative members, owners every day, and we wanted them to get light on other investor owners and what you guys are doing for rate, your rate payers. And so again, I just want to thank you. And also, it wouldn't be me if I didn't acknowledge as well our executive director, Ms. Shambi Lambright, and the NAACP president, Mr. Uh, Reverend. Robert James, and thank you guys again. And thank you. Thank you, thank appreciate you. it. And thank you for everyone who was uh, out there watching this Facebook Live.